Okay, so um, the meeting is being recorded. Um, again, good morning, everyone. I hope you are all doing well, and I'm really glad and really happy to join you this morning, uh, Cincinnati time this morning, <clears throat> to share a little bit about uh, how to study um, how to study uh, online effectively, right? Strategies for effective and productive online learning because uh, you know in the fall you will be doing online learning and the UC and UC International we hope your uh, study will be a uh, will you know um, your experience will be a successful experience so we a, um, we prepared this uh, webinar for you just to uh, support your transition to uh, college life and also to uh, online learning all right so let's get started so Please make sure um, the okay. Did someone request annotation from me? Should I can I make sure to share content? Okay, I'm just cancel decline. cancel request to annotate. Okay, I'm gonna decline this as we yeah as we speak. All right, um, cool. Uh, while we are doing the presentation, so I hope that you could keep your camera um, off and also keep your uh, microphone muted um, to, so we won't have any interruption in the process. And if you have any questions, um, please save it to the end. Um, and I'll leave about five to 10 minutes for a QA. and a All right. Uh, so hi, everyone again. My name is Michelle, Michelle Huang. I am the International Student Support Specialist at UC International, and I'm also an adjunct faculty at the College of um, uh, the School of Education. Um, so I, so I support uh, international student retention and uh, student success, um, especially on um, academic success. Um, so I also manage a um, collective of training and learning programs for uh, students, uh, international students um, at UC, and also for professional staff, um, faculty. So, and the programs focus on, on you know, student success, uh, acculturation, and for faculty and staff, the focus is on intercultural communication and how to best uh, support you, international students, um, as you study um, at UC. All right, I have two master's degree, uh, one is uh, why my master's degree happens to be. All right. Please, uh, yeah, please mute your phone um, as we go through the webinar. All right. Um, so, why the master's degree happens to be uh, curriculum design and instructional technology, um, and with a focus on e learning design. So what today, what I'm going to do is I'll take you to explore some strategies that will be helpful for you uh, for your transition into online learning. So this is my email address. Uh, if you have any inquiries or questions, feel free to email me. All right. Uh, so for today's training, there are three main parts. The first part, we're going to talk a little bit about the basic and the prep work for online learning. And I'll spend a little more time on strategies. All right. So I also have prepared a list of resources uh, that will be helpful for your online learning, which we will share with you after um, after the uh, the session. All right. Um, I will leave again. I will leave about five to ten minutes at the end for Q and A. Uh, so please save your questions until the end. Uh, throughout the webinar, uh, please, again, please mute your microphone and for the Q&A sessions, please feel free to unmute your microphone if you want to ask a question or you can choose to use um, as a chat function, which is a feature um, in WebEx, right? Um, you can click on the chat, the chat button and it will open up a chat box so which you can, where, where you can actually input your question. You can type in your question in the chat box. All right, this is a good process to get started of using and get familiarized of using a WebEx because WebEx will be the main uh, tool that your professors and the faculties will be using uh, when teaching online. All right, so hopefully we'll get through the content in um, a little less than an hour. All right, 
Cool. Um, so what we are hoping to achieve today um, um, is, well, first of all, to identify some key strategies um, to help improve your e-learning effectiveness and also productivity. And also I want to share some resources available at UC and beyond and beyond UC um, that will be very helpful um, to support uh, your uh, e-learning experience. All right. Cool. So let's get started. The basics. Um, first of all, what I want to say is to have a successful online learning experience, uh, you will have to prepare yourself uh, mentally, mentally for the challenge. So what this means is um, you need to set up the correct, the right mindset towards taking classes in a virtual setting. So what I do not hope you um, have is, you know, do not assume, do not have the false assumption that, you know, since the courses are offered online, the standard, the course standard will be lower. So the reality is um, your professor won't lower their course standard. So your professor have uh, pretty much the same expectation towards you, towards your performance. Um, you know, and of the quality of your work, just as, you know, when you take in regular in-person classes. So do not have the wrong assumptions that the course standard will be lower. So you need to put in the same amount of effort when you take online courses as you would uh, take, take in-person classes. So please be prepared, all right? Prepare yourself mentally. So, um, all right, so now you prepare your mindset. Um, so the next step is um, to have the correct, the right technology and also off-campus access to get you started. All right, so the first thing, the first and the most important piece of software you need to install on your laptop or computer is a VPN. So does anyone know what VPN is? Feel free to unmute yourself and tell us the answer. Does anyone know what VPN is? Uh, private network. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, that's a great answer. That is, yes, I've seen some answers in the chat box. Great, great. So what it means is a virtual uh, private network. So that's what VPN stands for. It's an abbreviation. So think if if you don't have you don't have already known this, just consider it as a uh, like a bridge which connects you to the, uh, the private network that only, only offer access to uh, authorized users. So consider you see every, every, every internet, uh, I'm sorry, our network, UC's network as a private network, and you as a UC student are authorized users, all right? So um, you see use Cisco and it connect uh, so what you can do is you can go to VPN at uc.edu and install. And when you are at a off-campus location, so connecting to these, this, uh, this specific VPN, the UC provided VPN will allow you to access UC's private network um, and restricted services um, that are for authorized users, you, you as a student, UC student. Well, so those services um, include like UC libraries and databases, right? Those are just a couple of examples. So this VPN is provided by UC and it is free, it's free for UC students. So whenever you are ready to, for you, whenever you are ready to study or, um, you know, do research uh, for materials online, or in the library, you know, access the library databases, make sure, please, please make sure that you log into this VPN first, all right? So how do you, what does it look like? So this is the, this is a screenshot from my laptop. Um, so when you install, download and install the VPN onto your laptop, you know, once you open it, this is something is pop, it's gonna pop up and asking you to connect. And you can simply click uh, click the connect button, and uh, it will take you to this page, the UC um, the UC um, you know uh, interface. Um, so you can use your UC ID like you are six plus two, and also your password to log in. All right. So and so that's how you 
uh, that's how you can connect um, to to VPN, Cisco AnyConnect. All right, so why do you need to log into VPN when you are at a off-campus location? All right, all right, so when you research, when you're doing a research, uh, or when you are searching for research paper or resources, it's very likely that UC Library may have already paid for it, you know, through different databases. So you wanna make sure that you don't actually, you will have access to those type of resources or research paper or different type of database, um, you know, um, just as you would as on um, as a on campus setting. So that's why you need to access to VPN when you are at an off campus location. Um, and another thing, another reason is if you are at a region, I know there are some regions that um, certain website are uh, restricted for um, for visitations. Um, those websites could include like YouTube, um, Google, or Gmails. So if you connect your VPN, you will be just like an on-campus setting. So you will have the um, you will have the uh, access to those websites, those restricted websites in certain regions. All right. So those are why you need to connect to VPN while you are at a off-campus setting. All right. So next piece, um, the, the 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 next very important thing you need to um, you need uh, you need to do is uh, connect to UC Canopy. So UC Canopy is the um, central access to virtual campus resources. So please bookmark this uh, website, this webpage, canopy.uc.edu, uh, on your browser, or just simply set it as your browser opening page, right? If you like. <laughs> Um, just canopy.uc.edu. So what this will take you is to, um, like I said, this is a central location, it's a central platform that uh, presents you all the virtual resources that UC offers to students. So this is a screenshot of what Canopy looks like. For example, that you will have access to Office 365 and a one stop where you can actually pay your, um, you know, pay your tuition and a check on registration, uh, you enroll for classes, right? And that you will have access to like a WebEx, the student WebEx, just as what we use right now. And um, there are, um, you know, there are libraries, as you can see, um, as you scroll down and explore this information. So take some time to explore UC Canopy. Um, before the semester starts and make sure to mark it on your, um, on your web browser because this will be the central location that you can click on this and it will take you to different, uh, the different services and uh, the different tools that UC offers. All right, you probably have noticed on the second icon on the first row, all right, is uh, my, uh, my courses. So when you click on my courses, it will take you directly to Canvas, which is UC's learning management system. All right, this is a uh, this is a screenshot of my Canvas page. So Canvas is the central platform where all your online courses will take place in. All right. So as you can see, by default, it's taking you to dashboard. So on this dashboard, what you see is you see a list of the courses, all your online courses listed on the dashboard. So my, my, so my, this Canvas view is uh, from my account, so it's a faculty view. But you will have a student view, which, is, which looks very similar to this. So you will have your courses listed. Um, listed on your Canvas, on your Canvas page, on your Canvas dashboard, right? So once you click on the specific course, in this case, I click on the first one, right? That's the course I'm teaching this summer. And this is what you, this is what a Canvas, a Canvas course look like. And this is a course view. It has different functions and different features. Uh, I encourage you to explore a Canvas training for students that UC has prepared for you. It's UC Canvas 101. So take some time to explore this training, to explore this course prior to classes start, all right? 
take some time to explore the features of the system. So get yourself familiarized of what Canvas offer and also differing functionalities and the different features. Um, so UC has prepared this Canvas 101 course. You have access through this link and also in on your Canvas, on your Canvas dashboard. So make sure you take some time to explore this course and get yourself familiarized with different features. The next thing I want to introduce to you is Office 365 Education. Microsoft Office 365 Education um, offers you many software. And if you, as a UC student, if you using if you if you use your Valley UC email address, you can download the whole Office suite for free. So UC um, so UC uses Outlook for emails. As you can see, Outlook is also one of the software that the Office 365 Education Suite offers. So make sure that you download the 365 Suite Education Suite into your laptop or computer before the semester starts. All right. Um, and for your cell phone, make sure that you connect your smartphone to UC email. And you can download Outlook app to your smartphone as well. Okay. Uh, so this is a uh, one pager, um, all the resources for online learning that um, I prepared for you guys. And uh, I will I'll ask the host of this webinar, uh, I'll ask Nick to share this with you after the webinar, so you can keep this for your own use, uh, or you can, and you can share with your uh, friends who are, uh, or your fellow classmates who are also taking online courses in the fall, all right? So those addition, there are some additional important resources I'm going to share with you in the resource section that we were going to cover in a little bit. All right, so let's move on to strategies for effective and productive online learning. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is a list of strategies for effective and productive online learning. As you can see, go through the as you go through the list, as you will probably notice, the first four is on academics and learning. And the second two is focusing on your personal development. So the first strategy, know your instructor or your professor's expectations. So what does this mean? For online learning, there are two major types of instruction, pre-recorded lectures, asynchronous lectures, or live lectures via, uh, via WebEx or Teams. So for pre-recorded lectures, it is um, more flexible uh, when you watch the lectures, as long as you watch the lectures within the uh, provided time period, right? If you have different learning modules, in each module you, there are different lectures being provided to you. Make sure you watch that during, within the given time period. And for the live lectures, synchronous lectures, you will need to be on time and participate in the lectures. At the required time, your instructors will provide the time and also how to access to the lectures to you, right? So your, it is your job and your responsibility to be on time and to participate in those lectures. So there is, um, so this is very much a synchronous lectures, live lectures is very much similar to a uh, real time, like an in-person classroom experience, which allows real time communications with your professors or peers in smaller scale classes. In large scale lectures, there may not be, um, that may not be the case, but it depends. So if you are taking four to six classes this semester, you are very likely, it is very likely that you encounter both of the online learning instruction formats, all right? Both of the online learning instruction format. Participations. Participation is a big part for e-learning. And also after later, after you uh, are able to return to campus, arrive on campus, taking in-person class, 
you will uh, you will experience this as well. Like participation in, is also a very important part for in-person learning as well. So how do you do participation in an online learning format? So for pre-recorded lectures, for pre-recorded lectures or asynchronous lectures, you are very likely to be asked to post some discussion board, discussion thread, and on the discussion board on Canvas. And you may be asked to do activities or quizzes for different learning modules, depending on the learning content or the requirement of different faculties. For live lectures, if you are taking a live lectures, your professor may use real-time activities, right? Or pop-up quizzes or in-class discussions or in-class chat to keep you engaged. Just like what I asked you a question just now, I'm looking, I was looking forward to your answers, right? So please make sure you you don't just simply walk away in the middle of the lectures, okay? So, okay. So, you know, if your professor posts like pop-up quizzes or uh, discussions, and you will simply just miss it if you simply walk away from the lecture. So make sure that you take uh, synchronous, i.e. live lectures, just as serious as, you know, in-person lectures. All right, and uh, office hours. In the United States, faculties all host office hours every week. So this office hour is a time that you can um, visit office hours if you use an in-person setting without making appointments and ask questions and talk about um, you know, the concerns that you have or the difficulty you encounter at the course. So for virtual setting, you will need to see, does your office, or does your professor host any <coughs> virtual office hours? And does your professor specify, <coughs> excuse me, does your professor specify the preferred method to be contacted through emails or like a video meetings or um, Microsoft Team, which is an instant messenger um, that you see used for instant communication? <clears throat> or is there is any other alternatives, right? All this information is elicited in the course syllabus. Your professor will give you a course syllabus at the beginning of the semester. So make sure you read the syllabus carefully, all right? Oh, apologize. Read the syllabus carefully and read emails from your professors. <clears throat> Excuse me. So emails will be the primary channel for communication between you and the professors and the staff and administrative units at UC. So make sure that you read emails, not your personal email. In this case, what I mean is your UC emails. And that's why it's very important that you install Outlook M2 your um, your laptop or computer so you can check on Outlook on a regular basis, right? And also link UC emails to your uh, to your smartphone as well. Maintain regular communication. So this is the next piece of strategy. Is all the regular in-person courses and activities are paused right now? Um, you will probably at some point feel um, disconnected. So the best way, the best, <clears throat> the best way to beat this type of feeling is to stay connected, stay connected, and stay engaged. And it will help you to reduce your anxiety and make you feel you be supported. So there are three group of people that I hope you can stay connected with. The first group of people is your professors, right? You need to inform your professor if you encounter any challenges or difficulties. For example, if you are, for example, if you're overseas and there is certain reading or uh, resources uh, that your instructor share with you that cannot be open, 
you should tell your instructor about this. You should email your instructors and ask them if there is an maybe alternative format. For example, if there is any um, PDF format that's available that can be easily open, right? And if you feel confused about an assignment, you can request a past example or you can re request, um, ask for some clarification. You can even request a sample assignment or a sample task that have been taken in the past. And the last thing is you want to show appreciation to your professor because um, this is a challenging time for you and also for your professor as well, right? So this is a challenging time for all of us. Showing you a sincere appreciation to the hard work that your professor uh, put together to create the learning material and to convert everything online, uh, they will appreciate it. They will definitely appreciate it for sure. So when you email your professors, so you make sure that you thank them for their hard work and show appreciation, all right? So what you can do is you should email your questions or concern or like I mentioned, there are there may be virtual office hours. You can request a virtual meeting or stop by during the virtual office hour, depending on the different um, the different uh, the different virtual meeting uh, that's been set up or by your different faculty. So make sure you read your syllabus carefully and look for those informations. All right, the next group of people you need to stay connected with is your advisors. Your academic advisor is the most important um, the, is the most important group of people you need to stay connected with. You should um, schedule a meeting with your advisor at least once a year, at least once per year to discuss your course selections and also your academic progress. Right? Your academic advisor is a front line of support for your academic career at UC. And uh, there is a, a tool that you can use, which is called Starfish. You can go on Starfish and then make an appointment with your academic advisor, or you can email them your questions or concerns. All right. So the last group of people you need to stay connected with is your peers, <laughs> meaning your fellow classmates, or if you get to know someone who is also uh, maybe international student or domestic student that taking the same class and you want to make sure that you stay connected with them. All right. You can establish a study routine with a few peers, with a few fellow classmates and motivate each other on accomplishing tasks on time. Right? If there is something on the course site that looks abnormal to you, you want to check with your fellow classmates and to see if there may be a system or a technical glitch issues on your end. Right? And how you stay connected with them, Microsoft Teams, again, this is a great tool that allows you to do instant chats without interference as you would get as you use Facebook or um, different type of messengers, right? So Microsoft Team is something you see use. So I encourage you to explore this and add your fellow classmates into uh, your contact list on Microsoft Teams. You could definitely use social media too, tools as well, like Facebook Messengers or uh, you know WhatsApp group or uh, WeChat group or any other alternative that you guys feel comfortable using. All right, use this to facilitate informal communication with your fellow classmates and with your friends. <clears throat> All right, the next strategy is to stay organized and also stay informed. You should check on the you should check on the course content on Canvas regularly. I got a question for you. How often do you think you should check on each course on Canvas? How often do you think you should check on courses on Canvas? I've seen some responses on chat functions uh, in the chat box. All right, let's see. Every day, weekly, once a day, daily. Okay, weekly, daily. Okay, 
every day, weekly, perfect. I think daily and weekly as two um, major, <coughs> major responses. All right, here's the thing. The basic, the bottom line for you, the bottom line, meaning the bare minimum requirement, the bare minimum expectation is for you to check on each course on Canvas at least twice a week. Once at the beginning of the week, beginning of the week meaning Mondays, right? Checking for updates. And after submitting a work for feedback or towards the end of the week to go through the content or go through your study, you know, go through the materials to make sure you cover all the materials, right? I recommend you to do this very early in the week, like on Mondays, to check for updates. Check on each course to see what you need to do for the specific week. And if there's any update that your instructor or your professor recently posted, right? I release my course every Sunday, every Sunday, Sunday night and midnight. So the student will have access and the student will have access to the information very early Monday morning. So different professor, different faculty do this differently, but you do want to make sure that you check on each course on Canvas at least twice a week. If you want to check it on a daily basis, it's great. But think about this. You may not necessarily, you won't just take one course or two courses this semester. It's very likely that you are taking four to six courses throughout the semester in the fall, right? So you want to balance your schedule and balance your view as well. So you don't want to overwhelm yourself. It is great that you have the capacity to check on the course's content on a weekly basis. But I would encourage you to uh, take the first couple of weeks as a pilot week, as a trial, right? And to see like a, what, uh, what type of frequency and what type of schedule will make you feel comfortable and also uh, stay on top of your coursework, right? You need to balance your work among different courses that you don't want to exhaust yourself as well, all right? Again, bare minimum is twice a week. So you should watch out for course announcements on Canvas. And again, read emails from your professors. I cannot stress this enough. You need to read emails. Check your emails, you know, as often as possible on maybe on a daily basis or like every other days to look for course announcements. Email, UC email will be the primary channel for communication that your UC faculty and the staff uh, will um, do, uh, will use to communicate with you, right? This is a screenshot of the course you just saw. And the first part, the first part in the red box is the announcements. Your faculty, your professor posts those announcements on Canvas. It will show up on the top part of your Canvas course. And it will also be sent to you as an email to your UC email address. So you wanna make sure that you check those email on a regular basis, all right? Make sure that you explore the Canvas one on one course as well. The next strategy is to keep track of your progress. Check your grades on Canvas on a regular basis and check your instruction feedback on your working progress and make improvements as needed, as needed. All right. So this is a screenshot of the grade sessions. The grade sessions on Canvas. As you can see, as you can see, this list on the on this list, you will see a list of homework or assignments for a course and the due date and the due dates and also status. If you did not submit the work, it will be marked as missing. And each assignment is worth five points in this case. Uh, different courses have different requirements. Different courses have different type of uh, different components of the grading policy. So this is just an example. And you will see the score you received as out of the full score, right? 
All right, so this is a great place for you to keep track on your progress. Okay, <clears throat> so manage your time. I have a question for you before we get started. Do you use a planner or a virtual calendar to manage your time? You can enter a one for yes. Great, two, two, I'm seeing some twos. Two, okay, one, two, okay, good, good. I've seen some ones and some twos, um, good. All right, um, so calendar, schedule, a personal schedule is a great way, is a great, is a great way for you to manage your time. So what you see on the screen is a schedule. So you, what you should do is, you can simply find a template online. You should you can simply find a template online, or what you can do is you can create one using Excel. You can assign time for readings and working on assignments and eating, and making meals, you know, doing indoor workouts, entertain. And why you need to do this is because once you assign time to your schedule and you stick to a schedule and it will help you to avoid distractions. And remember, we just talked about if you're taking four to six courses in the fall, it's very likely that you will have different time, you will have different assignment deadline and due days. It is challenging for you to remember all those important days just using your mind. Right? What you want to do is to log all those important due dates and all log all oh. those important times in one central location. And when you when you take out your schedule, you say, well, okay, those are the due dates. And you can assign time to work on your coursework, work on the assignment, work on the exam, prepare for the exams as you you know, as you um, uh, as you go through your schedule, right? Assign time for different type of tasks and activities, and it will actually help you to reduce the distractions. All right, use a virtual calendar. So once you're getting used to using a schedule, the next step up is to use a virtual calendar or a planner. It works very similar to a schedule, but this virtual calendar is smarter. It's smarter, right? And the planner is definitely is um, you know it's a booklet. A, you will have you will have the schedule throughout the year, right? And I encourage you to explore Microsoft Outlook Calendar, which is a function under uh, Microsoft Outlook. And this is a screenshot out of what it looked like if you keep a calendar through uh, on Outlook. And you can assign time for different meetings. This is really just for workplace, um, but this give you um, uh, this give you a brief idea of what it look like. So you can block a couple of hours to study for the specific course, and you can block the time when you have to, when you have to take the uh, in-person live lectures, right? So use a planner and a virtual calendar to help you organize your schedules. All right, uh, one thing I wanna say about time management is um, <clears throat> the reason it's really important to uh, manage your time wisely, especially when you're doing virtual and online learning is there are many distractions. There are many distractions. It goes without a doubt, right? Especially if you were studying at home, you feel like, well, I just really want to watch certain TV shows, or you know, I just want to uh, go um, go eat sometimes. So this will help you keeping a schedule and keeping and keeping a schedule on a planner or a virtual calendar will help you to create a mental boundary. You tell yourself, is in this certain time I'll do this and do this only, right? You create a boundary for yourself. And the important piece, the hardest piece, is not creating the schedule the hardest part is to keep your schedule right and to practice what you set for yourself the schedule you set for yourself 
all right i have a, i have a really high expectation on you guys so um i think you can definitely start doing this all right uh the last piece of strategy is keep yourself focused i want to share a few tips on uh, how to keep yourself focused and uh, this will help improve your productivity all right so the first suggestion is to find a designated workplace a designated workplace is a place that you find for yourself and here in this in this space in this workspace you concentrate on studying and on studying only you don't do other things at your designated workplace, you concentrate on studying and on studying only. Again, this is a mental boundary you are setting for yourself. So this will help you to avoid distractions. You can tell your parents, your siblings, that when I, when I, when I am at my workspace, I'm working, I'm studying. So no interruptions. Right. Once I'm ready for play, I will just go somewhere. I'll just go somewhere that's not my workstation, a workspace. All right. And start a ritual. Start a ritual. If you are studying your room, so you should make bed every morning. Right. A clean and an and, and organized bedroom will make yourself feel very fresh mentally. So start a ritual such as. Make bed every morning. It's really just a very little thing, but it will be amazed how much it changes your mindset and your how you feel every morning. And make your breakfast, make your own breakfast, or eat a balanced meal, like or eat a balanced breakfast to get yourself ready for studying. And do not work in your bed. I know this is a tempting, this is a tempting thing to do because it's so comfy, right? But this will cause low productivities. Like I cannot, I it's um it's a little embarrassing to admit that at the beginning I tried this too when I was a student. But no matter how many cup of coffees that I had in the morning, I often feel that I simply just goes into a very sleepy mode. It's not productive. So go back to the strategy, uh, the suggestion number one find a designated workstation which is not your bed right okay so the next piece of suggestion is create boundaries create boundaries to avoid distractions do not play video video games or watch youtubes at the same time while you're studying unless it's just simply like a relaxing music you want to play in the background all right do not play videos or watch, uh, do not play video games or watch videos at the same time while you're studying, all right? Especially do not do this when you are taking live lectures. Okay, the last thing is reward yourself. This is a challenging time. You wanna make sure you reward yourself as you accomplish certain tasks. And those tasks that I just shared with you are a lot of information. And um, if you are able to do this, you are definitely, um, you know, halfway, halfway towards success already. So make sure you reward yourself as you accomplish certain tasks. This make you feel um, like a certain level of accomplishment, right? All right, resources. There is a list of a virtual and a virtual resources, um, tech, tech, technologies and virtual access. So please, um, please check this out. And a couple of a couple of resources I have shared with you and I mentioned to you already. So you want to make sure that you explore the rest of the resources before the classes start. All right. And updates on COVID-19, UC publish updates on COVID-19 on a regular basis. And also you do want to watch CDC's updates, which is a central for, uh, I'm sorry, central for disease uh, control uh, in the United States for updates on the U.S. And also if you want to watch for the information around uh, the world in your local regions, make sure you check the, the, the WHO's updates as well. All right. Uh, pre preventing plagiarism, uh, there are certain online guides and also you can take quizzes, interactive tutorial with a quiz. 
um, make sure that you check those out prior to the semester starts. So in the fall, I will be hosting different types of success webinars. Uh, make sure you watch out for your emails. So there's another very important thing you need to look out in your emails, which is, excuse me, um, you know, we, 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 which is because different administrative units like UC International, we send emails to you on a regular basis to provide you different resources and a different uh, to provide you the information on different type of events. Um, the virtual events is happening. So you can keep yourself busy and keep yourself still engaged while on online on virtual setting. And we care a lot about your well-being. So um, and we create um, also in-person activities are paused right now. Um, but we try very hard and we try of try our very best to provide different type of virtual interactions and virtual engagements for you, um, you know, during this um, during this uh, social distancing, uh, social distancing time. All right, academic support, learning commons. Learning commons is a important academic support unit at UC. It provides a different type of support and different type of services to support students on your academics and your study. It has tutor, peer tutor, and a success webinar, a success seminars, and, you know, a success webinars, and also academic writing center. Make sure you take some time to explore UC Learning Commons website. All right, especially academic writing center, which I hope you can use, you will utilize throughout your time at UC. So all those, you know, all those services are free, all are free. All UC services, those type of services are free. So you want to make sure that you, you, you utilize, you take the best use, you make the best use out of those uh, resources and supports. So when you are asked to write papers or essays or law journals, right, which I would say very likely because it's writing intensive and in certain majors it's very, um, it's very intensive. Um, so you want to make sure that if you are not sure about um, the writings, your writings, you want to make sure you make appointment, like a virtual appointment is available nowadays with the Academic Writing Center and utilize those services, all right? Again, uh, Microsoft Office 365 uh, it includes Outlook, which is the email, which is the emails that you see use, and you also have access to a web Outlook. As you remember, there was one uh, icon um, that's on the canopy, you see canopy is web Outlook, but you can download Outlook onto your laptop or your computer, right? Um, and also Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams, Right, which was the uh, which is the instant uh, messenger that you can utilize to communicate with your fellow classmates. All right, okay, that just concludes all my uh, all the information I want to share with you. I hope you find this information useful. Uh, and again, I am the support specialist at UC International, so I work exclusively with freshmen. So. Um, you know, throughout your freshman years, I'll be supporting you by providing you different type of webinars or uh, resources and uh, success success strategies informations. Um, so I will be, uh, you know, I will be supporting you throughout your freshman year, and uh, you will be seeing me uh, actually very often <laughs> throughout your freshman year. Um, because, you know, as we realize and UC International, again, we we really care about your well-being and you're doing well academically and uh, um, and also in different aspects. So, um, and we realize that freshman year is, the bear, is a very challenging time as you adjust to um, the university settings, right? So, especially now, it's in a virtual setting. So, you know, I will be with you throughout your freshman year. So make sure that you stay uh, connected with me as well. All right. So questions. I'll leave about five minutes for questions. Hi, Michelle. Yes. Hi, Nick. How are you? Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick Paddock. I work in international admissions. And I have a few questions I've written down from the chat feature. 
So my first question is about Starfish. Um, students are wondering how to access Starfish and what they'll see when they get into that program. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, if you want to access Starfish, uh, which is a Siri link, um the on the on the left uh on the left hand on the left on the column of uh, the column on the left hand so one two three the third link the third link the third bullet point i'm sorry the fourth bullet point from the top and the third bullet point from the bottom actually uh is the link to starfish you simply click on this web page and it will take you to starfish and it, it is a um it is, um, you know, part of the UC um, services. So what you will see is when you click on Starfish, I don't have a screenshot right now, but um, I can describe it to you. You will see a, um, a group of your support network, including your academic advisor, including me, including if you're in a co-op major, your co-op advisors, and including, you know, your uh, professors, you will see the, a list of your support network in there. And in, there are different functions on Starfish, and you can click on different functions, for example, request an appointment, and it will actually directly take you to requesting an appointment with your advisor, for example. So this is somewhere you can find all your support network in one central location. So I've heard students actually told me before that, oh, I don't know who my academic advisor is. There, that is a, one of the places you can find your academic advisor. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is about asynchronous and synchronous classes. A student asked mm -hmm. if um, faculty presentations will be live or be recorded. Um, the student is concerned that they may have to get up at 3 a.m. to attend a class. So mm -hmm. they're just curious to know more about the definition of asynchronous and synchronous classes and what UC will be offering. Well, um, so it differs. It differs. So it really depending on the the nature of the course, the content of the course. So it differs from um, course to course, from major to major, and it depending on the preference of your faculty as well. Um, almost, almost like when I teach this summer, I actually did a um, poll to ask students to put in their a time zone and their availability. So if you receive a poll like that, you want to make sure you indicate your availability. I, I'm sure your faculty, if they are doing asynchronous courses, live lectures, they will, um, they will consider all aspects. If you, it's a large lecture, like 50, 60 students and all across the world, they will definitely take that into consideration, different time zone. And for this class that I'm teaching this summer, I'm hosting multiple live lectures. Um, and um, we are doing it at 9 a.m. Most, most of the live lecture we are doing it at 9 a.m., like Cincinnati local time, which is, um, which is a time that I set up after polling the student at the beginning of the semester. So I want to reassure you that faculty um, our, uh, you know, faculty and staff and um, their job, their job is there to support you. If you feel, con if you have concerns, you want to make sure you express a concern to the, your professor and to the staff and um, you don't hold it to yourself, right? You don't want to be like in towards the very end of the semester, the final week, and uh, you simply just tell your professors that because of a time difference that I was not able to attend like 98% of the live lecture, right? If you don't tell them you have a different opinions or if you experience difficulty, they don't know this, right? I always tell my students that uh, you want to make sure that you get your message and your information communications across to your professor, right? So I can reassure you that faculties, we care greatly about you um, and um, we will definitely take every aspect into consideration. And if by any chance um, you don't, you feel like there's something is missing and you are literally having difficulty, again, make sure to email your faculties and communicate with them, all right? And Michelle, we have a question about exams. A student is curious okay. to know how are exams given for these online um, courses? Right, that's a good question. So again, different courses, they do different way. Um, some, 
different courses do it in a different way. Uh, you know, in Canvas, there's a different exam setting. Um, and also they could use um, maybe, um, and they could use like, for example, in, uh, in different type of virtual learning setting, uh, your faculty may likely to create certain level um, of a certain level of skills or projects that you could do as a final project and uh, they divide it up by different components. So that will be another greeting, uh, a greeting um, another way to greet you to, you know, on your work on certain like maybe projects, right? As versus to like a certain exams that you will have to do um, as a given time period. But um, Canvas has a feature, it has quizzes and have exams and um, you can explore that through the Canvas one-on-one as well. So there will be like a different, like a multi-question answer quizzes and there's short essay quizzes. Your faculty can time you, that's an option. And they can leave it like as a, like a open, like a take home exam, which they don't, where they don't time you and they just simply leave a deadline, right? So there are different options. You wanna make sure that you explore those features and I think in, in terms of virtual settings, um, I, I know that there are some um, orientation leaders in this room and you will later, like at nine o'clock, you will be going to a different classroom and they can actually also share their experience with you about taking exams and taking different quizzes um, in like their experience in the fall. But just remember this, um, you know, uh, um, if there is a time exam, you want to make sure that you start uh, when you are ready. And um, if it's not a time exam, so make sure that you simply just do that before the deadline. And if there is a, any large scale project which your faculty, uh, which your professor grades you on, on different components of the project, and that could be another way to grade you. And they could ask you to different type of journals too as part of the, um, the, the, the final grade. Mm -hmm. All right, Michelle, we have one, just a one minute left, but I have one really important question, and it's in mm -hmm. regards to course materials. So, Absolutely. And I know that will look different for every course and every college, but if you could speak to that briefly, and then I'll come back on to give next steps. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in terms of course materials, I know that colleges are trying very hard, trying to locate like the e-materials for you. Right, like uh, e-materials, including uh, textbook, journals, papers, articles, um, or you know, um, maybe uh, just different passages uh, from uh, from a different um, from from different textbooks. So faculties and colleges they're trying very hard um, to maneuver uh, the challenge of you, you being in an international location and have limited access. If there's e-textbook available, your faculty and the colleges will actually, your professor will list it in the syllabus and to give you instruction on where to get the e-textbook um, and how to get the e-textbook. But um, for certain courses, they may actually, um, you know, uh, because there is um, uh, copyright uh, restrictions, uh, so they may actually provide you with a very small portion um, of the textbook um, that's um, that's which is um, uh, when it's not against the copyrights in the United States, and they could provide you different sources of uh, uh, materials um, for the uh, online for the um, for your online learning as well. Mm -hmm. But just watch for just watch and read your syllabus very carefully at the beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. 